Chris Lemons laid unconscious on the North Sea bed, almost 100 meters below the surface. With no hope, he accepted his fate to spend his last minutes in the dark and cold waters of the North Sea. Chris worked in the North Sea diving in a diving bell repairing oil rig structures. Like always, it was a usual day in September 2012. At least that was normal for a scuba diver. But even for Chris, he never would have expected the day to end the way it did. That day, Chris along with two of his co-workers, Dave Yusa and Duncan Olcock were lowered 91 meters in their diving bell to fix a pipe on the seabed at the Huntington oil field east of Peterhead in Aberdeenshire. At the time, the ship was enduring 35 knot winds but according to experts, it was pretty standard weather for that time of the year. So Chris and his two co-workers did not waste a single second and got to work as they were in deep and dark sea. A bit of time went by. All three divers suddenly heard an alarm. By this point, the trio had been communicating with the diver supervisor, Craig, up in the ship through an earpiece in their helmets. At first, they thought it was just a test as they would hear alarms often in the dive control. But this time, the sound was instantaneously followed by Craig asking Chris and the other two to get out of the structure, get on top of it and back to the diving bell as quickly as they could. Chris could tell from the urgency in Craig's voice that this was not a drill. This was something deadly serious. While Chris and the other two were in the water, what they didn't know was that the ship was actually moving away as the computer that kept the ship in position had failed. Now, this means bad news. You see, when divers are lowered to an extreme depth in a diving bell, they are still kept attached to the ship by a cord. So to Chris and his two friends, the ship drifting away meant them also being dragged away with it because they were attached to the ship by the cord. However, Chris specifically had an even worse problem. His cord got snagged on a part of a metal structure. It made everything 100 times more deadly for him. That cord was not only the tether back to the diving bell and the ship, but it also provided Chris or any other diver for that matter with breathing gas and hot water to keep the suits warm in the 3 degree C as well as light and electricity. It was also his only way of communicating with the ship. So right away he knew he was in grave danger. He basically had 8000 tons of a ship pulling against him. He was essentially an anchor to that in the bottom. He was just helpless, there's nothing he could do to survive, basically. Also, Dave and Duncan could not do anything as well. The cord was pulled so tight it was bending a stainless steel rack off the wall in the diving bell. Then not long passed, first the communication cable snapped. Then the gas hose stretched, Chris had nothing to breathe. All this was happening within a matter of like 30 to 60 seconds. You see, when divers go to an extreme depth to work at oil rigs, they almost never carry anything because the cord always provides them with everything. It was the same with Chris. He would have about 5-6 to six hours of gas in the tanks and that was nowhere near enough for him to survive. The gas hose is too stretched and therefore he cannot breathe. And that was the problem. So now that there is no air, Chris had no option but to use his bailout gas. So, he opened the supply on his back. Shortly thereafter, the cord fully snapped like a shotgun going off. Chris fell down to the floor of the sea. While Chris was falling almost 100 meters or 300 feet down to the seabed in scary darkness, he couldn't see a thing down there. Because remember, he lost not only his air supply but also electricity and light. By this point, it was about 2 in the morning. Though Chris somehow managed to find the structure they had been doing the repair on and found a way to climb up on top of it. But still, the diving bell was not there. They both also have disappeared. By this point, Chris already has used up about 2 to 3 minutes of his gas. He told himself, so this is where I would end my days. The probability of rescue in this time frame is almost next to zero. Chris felt intense fear and panic. He was on a countdown and it was counting really, really fast. Once he accepted that there was no hope of survival, he told himself, I am powerless to do anything to save myself. 
and with that, this serious and agonizing realization hit him. How did I find myself in this dark, sad and horrible place? He thought of everybody at home and the chaos he would cause. But what he didn't know is that his co-workers didn't really disappear. In fact, they along with the whole crew of the ship had been searching for him this whole time. Though they already had presumed Chris might be dead but still, they at least wanted to find the corpse. So they were putting an insane amount of effort to locate him. Miraculously, Dave and Duncan found him unconscious on the structure. By the time of his discovery, his bailout gas had fully run out. He should have died, but he didn't. When Duncan gave him a few breaths of air, he spluttered back to life. It had been about 35 minutes since Chris had turned on his emergency air supply by this point. So that means, if his bailout gas ran out within 5 to 6 minutes, for almost half an hour, he didn't have any air to breathe. But then how did he survive? With nothing to breathe for that long, Chris could easily have suffered brain damage, but he was completely fine. Chris believes the freezing water might have had something to do with slowing down his body functions, or the gas they breathe underwater might have been the reason as it has high concentration of oxygen. He thinks it may have saturated his tissues and cells to allow him to survive. Well, all in all, how he survived is a bit unclear, and maybe even a mystery. Nonetheless, what's important is that he survived and was safely rescued back to the ship. Though about three weeks later, he returned to diving again in the sea like nothing happened. It was an unpredictable ordeal. Nobody could have predicted a catastrophic computer failure literally at the time when the divers were in the water. But luckily, after that day, he never experienced anything life-threatening ever again. In fact, a few months after this incident, he married his fiancée Morag Martin. To this day, Morag says she's grateful to Duncan and Dave. She said, My stomach still churns to hear the story. I came ridiculously close to losing him. I am extremely grateful to both of them. So thanks to his two friends, Chris Lemon survived an ordeal that could have easily killed him. Alright guys, that's the end of this story and if you guys like my content, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate that.